You can't deny Blaziken has fell off since the good old days where it resided in Ubers. But today I'm going to be showcasing the secret Blaziken tech that could put it back on top again. Let's get into it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Garcia. Sweet. So they're going to lead off with Krokin, the Greninja, as I led off with Glimora. Now, this is not the worst matchup ever. They could go for a Water Shuriken here, and if they are loaded dice, it will KO my Glimora because we are a specially offensive one. So I'm going to have to go ahead and turn turn away and just go into my Alone Mola real quick because it will wall the ever-loving crap out of this Greninja. So... Greninja, let's see what you got. If it goes for the Water Shuriken, then we are we know we should have done that. They go for an Extra Sensory, which is going to hurt the Aloma Mola and turn themselves into a Psychic type. So they're not Battle Bond. That's good to know. And they are Life Orb as well, which is really good to know. So I could have stayed in there, but it's not worth the risk, you know, sometimes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip turn because they more than likely go ahead and switch out here. They do withdraw. They haven't got a Water Absorb or a Storm Drain Pokemon, so we should are free to go for this uh, flip turn. They bring in Chrom. Which is going to be the nice and shiny Corviknight. We go for a flip turn. That's going to do no damage. But they could be Rocky Helmet. They are Rocky Helmet, which is good to know. But we're going to regenerate all that back anyway. So it's not the end of the world taking that damage. And this gives us a free switch into our major um, Pokemon Blaziken. Blaziken is really good here because obviously their only switch in here is going to be Entei or the Greninja. Either one. It doesn't matter what they go into because we're going to get a we're going to get a speed boost from it. So we'll be able to outspeed the Entei and um, we'll be able to outspeed the Mouse Guard. So let's go for the Fire Blast. And um, they do withdraw the Corviknight. We need to get rid of the Corviknight to get Crocodile going because I feel like this is a Crocodile game for some reason. So Moltres is the one that's going to come in. Nice and shiny as well. I love Galarian Moltres as shiny. It looks better than the original Moltres. But Fire Blast does over half activating its Berserk, which is crazy good for me. But are they going to be a uh, Citrus Berry? That's the real question. They aren't. So do we risk another Fire Blast? Greninja does really well here, actually. Or do we go Terra Electric? <gasps> we could do. Now I'm going to risk a Fire Blast. Screw it. We'll just risk a Fire Blast. They actually go for a Choice Scarfed Hurricane. And that is going to miss, unfortunately, as we connect our Fire Blast. I had no idea they would be Choice Scarfed. I had no idea they'd be choice cards. So Moltres goes down, which is absolutely great for Blaziken. I tell thee what, like, that's great for Blaziken. Speed boost comes in. We're at plus two now. So we outspeed the Meowth Guard if it's scarfed. We outspeed everything on the team. All right, Croaking comes in the Greninja. So this is an interesting choice. So they must have Water Shuriken. That's the only reason they would bring it in here. In which case, if we go for an Aura Sphere, we'd be putting ourselves in a bit of a pickle. But we could Terror Electric here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to Terra Electric Terra Blast this thing so that we're not weak to Water Shuriken. Meaning we will be able to live a Water Shuriken and then take out the Greninja with Terra Blast, which would be fan blooming -tastic. So there we go. We're going to turn Terra Electric on this thing, like so. Boom. And then we'll go for a Terra Blast. They go for a Water Shuriken as expected, turning them into a Water type. This is no longer going to KO unless they get a crit on every single one, uh, which it doesn't look like they are going to do. And they only hit two times as well, which is really unfortunate. But they aren't running loaded dice, so I can't really have much sympathy for that. Um, so Terra Blast is going to come through. And that's going to take out the Greninja, which is fantastic. Blaziken putting in the work right now. What an absolute beast. Awesome stuff. So special special Blaziken I've really enjoyed. Um, testing on Showdown and stuff. Really enjoyed it. The only problem is obviously the Life Orb takes away from your health. Um, and if they, if they can just go into Entei now and just extreme speed us. Uh, which I guarantee they're going to do. Um, they're actually going to crumb the uh, Corviknight. So are they going to terror here? Do they think they can live a hit? They must be terroring. They, they've got to be like Terror Dragon or something. So let's go for an Aura Sphere expecting the terror. They withdrew their Corviknight, making a double switch into Zolt. Ah, they were baiting the Terror Blast to get the Motor Drive on the um, Electivire. That's pretty cool. But no, we go for an Aura Sphere here. I was expecting the Terra, and that works out really nicely for us because we are now going to be able to take out this Electivire in the next hit. But we are on a bit of a timer because we do have the Live Orb. Um, let's go for another Aura Sphere. I don't see any reason not to. I think the best bet is now is just keep switching to try and um, get the Live Orb recoil. They need to get their Entei in, though, because they must have extreme speed on that thing. We go for an Aura Sphere. We take out that Electivire. No problemo. Um, but anyway, if you made it this far, as always, if you find yourself enjoying this video and you want to see more of your favorite Pokemon in action, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And now let's see what they do in this situation now that Electivire is gone. 
They're going to go into Blaze, which is going to be the Entei, right? That's going to be the Entei. Yeah, definitely the Entei. Um, we exert some pressure, which is fine. We know it's going to go for an extreme speed here. It could be banded, though. So let's go for a protect just to scout. They are going to terrestrialize. That's interesting. So if they're terrestrializing, are they not terror? Are they not extreme speed? Potentially not. They are terror normal. So they're going for the terror normal extreme speed. I don't think they needed to do that because extreme speed definitely KOs still without the terror. Um, so we go for a protect just to scout because, again, they could be banded. And if we can catch this thing on the band... That'd be great because then we can just go into our resist. Um, we can go into Glimora, for example. Um, but Blaziken is unfortunately the best thing we have to hit this thing being a fighting type. But that extreme speed makes it a bit hard. Um, so what we're going to have to do here is we'll go into Corviknight, I believe. Is Corviknight the best answer here? And it's a bit risky because they could expect the Corviknight and they might not be banded. And they could go for a Sacred Fire here. But normally Entei is banded. Um, so if I assume that, then I'm going to assume that. So they do withdraw expecting this. Ah, interesting. So Corviknight is, um, they go into their own Corviknight. Fair enough. Interesting play. So we're going to go for a U-turn here. And I think we should be slower because I lowered the IVs on my Corviknight a little bit. Sorry, not the IVs. Um, what am I saying? Yeah, I think the IVs are lowered. Anyway, they withdraw their Corviknight and they go back into Blaze, which is great for us because it means we get a free switch. Um, they're going to exert some pressure, which is fantastic. We go for a U-turn. This tells me they are banded, which is great as well. Um, this is great because what we can do here is we can go into something and bait another attack. So if we assume they're going to have Sacred Fire... Oh, actually, no. Let's go Crocodile. Let's go Crocodile. Crocodile ain't doing anything for us anymore. But Crocodile can bait in the Sacred Fire, which is what we want. So if we go for a... Don't, I don't want to knock off. I want to go for an Earthquake. I want this thing to be banded so that we can lock it into a move. They withdraw Blaze. They're probably going to go the Corviknight, which is fair enough if they do. Yeah, Chrome comes in. It's a good play. The right play. So that's fine. Earthquake's not going to do anything. But what we can do then is we can knock off, which would be even better. So um, I'm going to go for a knock off now. Just get rid of this Rocky Helmet. And also just to do a bit of damage, you know. So knock off comes through. It does a bit of damage. Um, we get hit by the Rocky Helmet. That's fine. It's going to knock off their Rocky Helmet as well. They then go for a body press. So they are a body press variant, which is good to know. We did live that, though, which is great. Um, so now what we can do is um, we can go into Glimora. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, reason being is because the body press will activate our toxic debris. And having the toxic debris on the Meowth Garada or the Entei is going to be really useful. It can also bait the Corviknight to go for a defog here, which would be amazing. So um, they actually go for an iron defense, which is crazy good. However... They've already terrored. We know Blaze can, can KO this wing with Fire Blast. It's just a matter of hitting the Fire Blast. You know what I mean? So, they might think we're going to hit him with a Power Gem, which could do a lot of damage. Um, I might just set up late game Stealth Rocks here. So, Stealth Rocks come through. I don't care how many Iron Defenses they get up, because all we need to do is hit a Fire Blast or a Terror Blast. Um, I think Terror Blast is probably the safer option. So, they go for the Iron Defense. And we have got a Raging... We've got the Raging uh, Bolt in the back as well, which is like, you know, that takes this thing out easily. So... And um, we got the self rocks up. Let's just go back into Crocodile and sack it off. Because they're probably going to attack now. There we go. So we're going to our Crocodile. Like so. Sack it off to a body press. There's the body press. Like so. And then we can just get Blaziken in. And now I'm going to go Blaziken. Purely because I want to get another KO with the Blaziken. And also because they can't switch into uh, they can't switch into Fire Blast. They can't. They can't switch into the Blaziken because they've got a Miascarada and they've got this thing. So I'm going to risk it for a Chocolate Biscuit and I'm going to go for the Fire Blast right now. If we miss, we miss and it's not the end of the world because we have Raging Bolt. If we don't miss, then we get another KO. So Fire Blast comes through. We don't miss, which is great. Cleanly KOing the Corviknight, which is fantastic. So that's awesome. Blaziken's putting in the work right now, I tell thee. Right, Blaze comes in once again. This thing's going to go for a Extreme Speed. Um, Pretty much. It has to go for an Extreme Speed, right? But because we think it's banded, I'm going to go for a protect just in case. I may as well go for a protect because they might over predict. They might think we're going to switch straight into Corviknight to take the extreme speed and they might go for a sacred fire. They did do that. They went for the sacred fire. Now, if this thing's not banded, there's no way Blaziken can beat it. Which means keeping Blaziken in right now to attack with an Aura Sphere is my best option. So let's go for an Aura Sphere now. Yep, Aura Sphere comes through. That's going to take out the Blaziken, no doubt, uh, the Entei, no doubt, which is fantastic as Blaze goes down. <laughs> in a blaze of glory. Down goes the Entei, which is amazing. So now we've just got Meowth to deal with. And we should have, a, we do have a little bit of health left. And provided the Meowth doesn't have Sucker Punch, we win this game with Aura Sphere. Because the Stealth Rocks are up. They're going to break a potential Sash if they have Sash. 
So there's the Meowth Skirada. Breaking a potential Sash. And um, they probably Choice Scarf, but we're going to go for the Aura Sphere anyway. And um, if they have stuck... Oh, the Battle's Council. There we go. So, great. Blaziken in a blaze of glory. Nearly swept that entire team, which is amazing. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun. Jules is the one. So, they're going to lead off with Bubbles, the Araquanid, as expected, as I lead off with Maglimora now. Um, we can scare them out with Power Gem. They may even just go straight for a um, Miracle here. So, I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock straight away. If they go for a... Uh, if they go for a, a Sticky Webs, we can Mortal Spin it away. And if they switch into Gold Dengo or the Heatran, we can just simply Earth Power both of those. So, Stealth Rocks are up, which is great. Araquanid is awesome. Floats in the air and all that stuff. Um, they go for a sticky web. I love a right quid. It is so cool. Such a cool man. I just can't figure out how to get the bubbles to work in Blender, you know? So anyway. Anyway. Let's go for a mortal spin here. If they switch into Heatran or Goldengo, like I think they will, then we can just earth power those things. Unless they've got air balloon on them. Uzi comes in. Who's Uzi? That is the Tentacruel. So Tentacruel comes in, which is interesting. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, saying it's not heavy duty boots, which is good to know. We go for a Mortal Spin, getting rid of that Sticky Webs. And even though it's not very effective, it'll still clear away the Sticky Web, which is fantastic. So, uh, unfortunately on this team, we don't have a Ghost type. Um, but we do have Pokemon that can take advantage of this situation. So, we'll go into Raging Bolt now. Raging Bolt can definitely take on this Tentacruel, even if they are Rapid Spin Swords Dance or something daft like that. So, we withdraw our Glimora. We've still got our Focus Sash intact, so we don't have to worry too much about it taking a hit. We'll go into Raging Bolt now. Raging Bolt can definitely take on this Tentacruel, even if they Rapid Spin, like I say. Um, they actually go for the pump, which is fine. Because now, they can't really go for Rapid Spin without getting Thunderclaps. So, I'm going to go for a... They don't have a Ground type, so I'm going to go for a Volt Switch here freely. They do withdraw the Tentacruel, not wanting to get taken out. And that means Stealth Rocks are up still, but Sticky Webs are not. And they're going to go into Magma, which is going to be the Heatran. Taking some Stealth Rock damage on the Switch in. We go for a Volt Switch, and that's going to do a, a bit of damage. Nothing too drastic. Um, so, the great thing about this is we can now... Um, we can we can go ahead and uh, predict some stuff here. So, uh, he turns in. So, we'll go straight into Crocodile, right? Crocodile's great. And do you know what's a great switch into Crocodile? When you're expecting an Earthquake, a Rillaboom that sets up Grassy Terrain. Because if you did not know, Grassy Terrain, for some reason, and it's the only Ground-type move it affects, Earthquake gets halved in damage. So, what I want to do here is I want to go for a knockoff. Because they're either going to stay in Terra or they're going to switch into Rillaboom. I'd rather knockoff. So, they do withdraw Magma. Are they going to go Rillaboom? Probably, right? Or oh, Breloom is also an option, I guess. Tarzan, that's going to be... Rillaboom. Okay, so Rillaboom comes in. That's great. We, we caught the Rillaboom on the Switch. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip. Gets the Grassy Surge up. That's always really fine. Um, what we can do here is just go straight for the knockoff that we already clicked. And see what item it had. It had the Terrain Extender, which is great. So it's more of a support Rillaboom. With the Grassy Terrain, anyway. Um, so what I could do here is I could Terra Dragon, Scale Shot it up. And Crocodile could have its way with their team. I think we're better off playing it safe and going into Corviknight. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, if they go for a U-turn, they do get the Rocky Helmet chip, which is great. And the only Pokemon they can really go into is going to be the um, Heatran again. So he they're going to go for a U-turn, get some Rocky Helmet chip, which is great. They're not going to be able to recover that Rocky Helmet damage because they are obviously switching out. They're going to not get that Grassy Terrain at the end of the turn. And they are probably going to go Heatran here, which is fine if they do. Magma comes in. That is going to be the Heatran, as you would expect them to bring in. It's going to get some more Stealth Rock chip, which is great. Um, and they are definitely going to go for a Magma Storm here because it will trap something or a Lava Plume, one of the two. Um, they may even go for their own Stealth Rocks. It's always a possibility with these things. So um, what we'll do is we'll go into something that not only outspeeds it, but can take a Magma Storm just fine. And that's going to be the Glimora. Uh, Glimora also... Um, it also uh, deters Ar Araquanid from coming in and going for a Sticky Web because we obviously outspeed and go for a Mortal Spin. So they actually make the double switch, predicting this switch. And they go into Little Mac, which is going to be the Breloom probably. Yes, it is the Breloom. Okay. So it's going to get some Stealth Rock Ship, taking away a potential Focus Sash, which they can run. And we're going to go into our Glimora. Now, Glimora does outspeed the Breloom. So we don't have to worry about um, anything other than Mock Punch from this thing. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to Glimora. And uh, they do get the Grassy Terrain, which does... Restore their Focus Sash, or restore their health to the point where Focus Sash will work. Um, so I'm going to go for a Sludge Wave here. I don't see any reason not to, because they are going to withdraw. And they've got two Steel Sites they could go into, but I can just Earth Power them the next turn. Uzi comes in. That is the Tentacruel. That's fine. Let's see how much damage Sludge Wave does after Stealth Rocks. And that'll, that'll make me decide whether or not to go for a um, Earth Power or not. They can definitely take an Earth Power. 
Now, do I want my poor Glimora to take an Earth Power? I don't think I do. Um, we know they've got Hydro Pump, so we know that's coming. We can just go into Raging Bolt. They might go for a Sludge Bomb, though. Let's go into Aloma Mola. Let's go into Aloma Mola. Um, because, A, they're probably going to go for a Rapid Spin anyway. And, B, we can just do a slow flip turn here. Which is what I'm going to do. So, they go for a Rapid Spin. We're getting rid of the Stealth Rocks. That's fine. Glimora can set them up at some point again. No problem. Um, there we go. The points have disappeared from the opposing team. Now, like I said, all we have to do here is go for the uh, flip turn. Because there's no point going for a Miracle because they are definitely going to switch out here. They've got two strong grass types. Let's go for a flip turn. and go. They actually go for their own flip turn, which is fine. Does no damage, of course. Um, and they go back. And then we're going to get some momentum going on here. So what we need to do, what we need to do is depending on what they go into here. If they go Rillaboom, they go Little, Little Mac. Okay. So Little Mac comes in. We go for a flip turn, once again breaking the potential focus sash. This time it's gone for good. Well, not for good, good. Um, now, this is what we have to do here. We go Blaziken. We go Blaziken. Blaziken is the way to go. So Blaziken comes in, like so. And we outspeed, of course. It's a Breloom. They're not that fast. They've got a, a decent speed, but not as fast as a Blaziken. And we know they, they could be Scarfed, I guess. Let's go for a Fire Blast here and try and get the KO straight up. They go for a Rock Tomb. And they miss. Which is unfortunate for them because I don't miss my Fire Blast. As down goes Little Mac. So there we go. The Breloom goes down. We're going to get a speed boost now. We're outspeeding everything on the team. Um, you know, barring the Rillaboom, of course. Because Rillaboom has a grassy glide. All right, Bubbles comes in. So what's Bubbles going to do here? Bubbles' main job is going to be to weaken us. Now, the problem I've got with this matchup is that um, they're probably going to go for a Liquidation for a start. Uh, we should go into Glimmore and get the Toxic Spikes up. Um, they do get absorbed by the Tentacruel, but we can go for a Sludge Wave. Get a little bit of damage off on this thing, because I'm not confident Terra Blast will KO here. Really not confident Terra Blast will KO, and they could be Focus Dashed. So they go for a Sticky Web, that's fine. I can just go for a Mortal Spin, no problem. This is going to bait in the Gold Dengo or the Heatran, no problem there. Grassy's Terrain does disappear, which is awesome. And I'm just going to go for a Mortal Spin. And this will poison the Araquanid as well if they stay in. So that'll be great. They withdraw Bubbles. Are they going to go into one of their Steel types to be immune to the Mortal Spin? If they do, that's a good play. Magma comes in. So the, the only downside to this play is that Mortal Spin's going to fail, yes. But we have got the Earth Power in the back, which I'm going to go for. So they get the Leftovers Recovery, which is fine. Um, but unfortunately for them, it's just not going to it's not going to work for them. <laughs> Because we're going we're gonna to go for an Earth Power right now. Or a Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock could be also be awesome. Breaking that Arachn with his Araquinid's Focus, that should be great. Um, I think I will go for the Stealth Rock option. I think that's my best option here. Because they could, well, Terra. If they actually go for a Switch, what are they going to switch into? Probably Tentacruel, right? Tarzan, the Rillaboom. Okay, that's fine. Grassy Terrain gets up. That's fine. We get the Stealth Rocks back up, which is going to be really useful. Because that Araquinid, that Focus Sash, and the Miracle can't be dealing with that. Can't be dealing with that. So... What's the best play to go for here? Is it to go for a Sludge Wave or is it to go for another Earth Power? I say they go for... I, I, I think Goldengo's got Air Balloon and they're going to switch into that. But what I can do here is um, if they're going to go for a U-turn more than likely, I should go for an Earth Power. Now, I'm going to go for a Sludge Wave because even if they bring the Steel type in, which they probably are now, we can just Earth Power it. Right? Yeah, Magma comes in. That's fine. So we can just Earth Power this thing the next turn. They have no um they have no flying types, so Earth Power's still gonna hit something. Sludge Wave comes through. Like so. And they're gonna get some recovery from the grassy terrain and the leftovers, which is, you know, unfortunate, but I'm pretty confident Earth Power will still nearly take this thing out. And when I say nearly, I mean nearly. So uh, Earth Power can come through now. And hopefully they don't switch out again. That'd be unfortunate. Earth Power comes through. Heatran goes down. We are looking very nice right now with Heatran out of the way. I, I think Blaziken can go through this team with the Terra Electric Terra Blast. We just need to make sure those Stealth Rocks stay up. Goldilocks comes in. That's going to be the Goldengo, right? Yeah, the Goldengo comes in. Is it floating in the air with the air balloon? It is. So they could have switched that in, but they obviously didn't know we had Earth Power necessarily. Because um, we hadn't revealed it yet. So what we'll do now is, knowing this thing can take us out very easily, um, we'll go into good old Aloma Mola. So we'll switch out our to uh, Glimora. And we'll go into Alomomomola. Palindrome over here. And we get caught in the sticky webs. That's fine. We can handle this. No problem. As uh, they go for a Shadow Ball, it should bounce right off us because of the Assault Vest. It does, which is fantastic. And now all we need to do is go for a Flip Turn and get Blaziken in. Pretty much. 
So let's go for that flip turn now. They go for a nasty plot, which is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Right now, we go for a flip turn, of course. And that's going to do no damage. But it does break the air balloon, which is great because it means Crookenile can take this thing on if it wants to. Saying that, we have knockoff, so we could take it on anyway. Now, there's the problem we've got. They haven't terraged yet. They haven't terraged yet. So they could easily terra with this thing uh, to stop the Blaziken from doing its thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Blaziken and I'm going to protect. I'm going to protect because A, we've got sticky webs up. So I know we don't outspeed. And B, I really want to see if they terror or not. Because we'll get our um, well, we'll, we'll get our uh, speed back up with the next protect. So uh, let's go for a protect now just to see. So they are going to terrestrialize. That's, that's, that's what I was scouting for. I was scouting for the terrestrialization. So let's see what they terror into. It's going to be a fairy type. So we can't take this thing on Blaziken right now. Because if it's air balloon, it's probably bulky, which means it lives a fire blast and takes us out with shadow ball. So going for the protect here was definitely the right play. As there we go, Protect comes through. And uh, they go for a Shadow Ball, which is obviously not going to work. But the problem they've got now is they're a Fairy type. Which means they no longer have a way of being immune to our Glimora. Glimora, who just so happens to have its whole health. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to sack something off. So I'm going to go into... I'm going to go Corviknight anyway. Because Corviknight's Brave Bird stops any of the other free Pokemon from switching in. So they have to stay in and take us out. So we'll go Corviknight now. They go for a Shadow Ball, which is obviously going to do a lot of damage to Noctis over here. Nearly takes us out. We get the Mirror Armor lowering the special defense, which is great for Blaziken. And we go for a Brave Bird here, just to see if we can do any damage. But obviously they outspeed us, so it's fine. Shadow Ball comes through. That's going to take out Corviknight. Not the end of the world, because what we can now do is we can now go into Glimora and Mortal Spin away those Sticky Webs, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Because we have got the Focus Sash, of course. So, Petunia comes in, like so. And um, they get caught in the Sticky Webs, but it's fine. We don't need to outspeed. We just need to live a hit, which we can because of the Focus Sash. And then we go for a Mortal Spin, which does affect Goldengo when it's Terra Fairy, which is fantastic. They withdraw. They actually opt to switch out the Goldengo, which is fair enough. They're going to get hit by a Sludge Wave, potentially. And they're going to go into Uzi, which is the Tentacruel. That's fine. Tentacruel is fine here. Um, they're more than likely going to go for a Rapid Spin, which is also fine. We go for a Mortal Spin, and that's going to do no damage, but it does get rid of the Sticky Webs, which is the main part of what we're doing here. So now that they've done that, we're going to go for an Earth Power, purely and simply because I want to I want to cake this Tentacruel out, because all they're going to do is Rapid Spin, get a Speed Boost, and then they outspeed everything on my team, pretty much. And that is not good. Um, the Raging Bolt can prevent this, but, you know, I don't, I don't really... <laughs> I don't really want to rely on Raging Bolt. So Poison Spikes uh, disappear because they Rapid Spin on the same turn. And we just go for an Earth Power here. It should take out the Tentacruel. It doesn't take out the Tentacruel, which means Stealth Rocks are unfortunately um, gone because they're going to go for a Hydro Pump now, which is going to KO us, provided it can connect. Hydro Pump does connect, which is unfortunate. That's going to take out Glimora. And we are currently screwed. So Glimora goes down. But this is not the end of the world. And let me tell you why. Because we have got the Raging Bolt. We can just go straight into Raging Bolt. We can Volt Switch, scare this thing out um, for sure. So we'll go Raging Bolt now. And we go for a Volt Switch 100% of the time here. They withdraw Uzi. The Tentacruel. Are they going to go Raccoon it? That'd be great. Bubbles comes in. That's great. That's it. That's it. This Volt Switch is going to do enough damage. Okay, just critical hit to the Raccoon it. That's annoying. Because now they get a free switch in on whatever we bring in. Which is probably going to be the Tentacruel. But you know what? It's fine. We can do this. We can do this with Blaziken. We can do this with Blaziken. It's fine. We'll bring Blaziken in now. I was hoping we could take out our Raccoon with Blaziken. Really was hoping that we could do that. Goldilocks comes in. And that is great for us, I guess. They probably go for a nasty plot predicting the Protect. So I'm going to go for a Fire Blast straight up. We do connect the Fire Blast. And that nearly takes our Goldilocks over there. We lose some HP because of the Life Orb. And they go for a Shadow Ball, which might do the job. Doesn't do the job, which is fantastic. We get a Speed Boost, which is great. Now all we need to do is go for another Fire Blast. But I'm not confident it'll hit. It'll KO. So I think I'll just go for a Terra Blast instead, just to get the KO. Terra Blast comes through. I don't want to Terra Electric until that Rillaboom comes in, you know? That's the problem. So Goldango goes down. 
I want to get that Tentacruel on the Switch. I think that the best way to get around this Blaziken is to go Tentacruel, Force Me to Terra Electric, and then go into Rillaboom so they can get, get a Grassy Glide for neutral damage. But Grassy Glide may actually KO from here. So they do go Tarzan, which is going to be the Rillaboom. It's going to get a Grassy Surge up, which is fine. That is going to heal us this turn. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to heal us the next turn, because I'm going to go for Protect here. Just get some Grassy Terrain Recovery to see if we can live a Grassy Glide. And I bet you any money that this Grassy Glide just fails on KOing us because of that fact. Because we got the Grassy Terrain Recovery. So the Grassy Terrain hopefully is going to work against them a bit here. Um, obviously, it works against us because it's going to, you know, make them take a hit. So here's the real question. Do we go for an Aura Sphere or do we go for a Fire Blast? I'm leaning towards Aura Sphere. But Fire Blast... I don't know if Aura Sphere KOs. I don't think it does because Aurelium is quite bulky. So I'm going to go for a Fire Blast here. Um, they go for a Grassy Glide. Is that going to KO? The Grassy Terrain! The Grassy Terrain! And we hit the Fire Blast. I told you, the Grassy Terrain would work against them. And we th we get a final hit in on the Rillaboom before going down to the Life Orb, which is fantastic. So that worked out really well for us. Going for our Protect to get the Grassy Terrain Recovery to just barely live the Grassy Glide. Awesome stuff. Absolutely awesome stuff. All we have to do now is go into Raging Bolt to finish the game. So next game comes in. Like so. We don't need to risk it with a Thunderclap. We don't want to risk the Thunderclap Mind Games. Because all we have to do now is go for a... Uh, I guess we'll go for a Dragon Pulse just to change it up a bit. Dragon Pulse comes through. We outspeed them, funnily enough. And down goes the Tentacruel. That is going to be the game. So Blaziken came through once again. What an absolute beast. I love special Blaziken. It's so cool. So cool. Anyway, GG. Uh, Jules is the one.